welcome to the MLB Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines coming to you from the West Coast. Josh Lander joined by my guys Mo Nawara in the Midwest and Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at a fun Friday night slate here in baseball. Only the Cubbies playing during the daytime. So plenty of night games to talk about here. We'll give you some of those best bets that we do like today. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page. Continue to follow along with us. We are bringing you these picks each and every weekday of this MLB regular season. Mo and Nate also have their great picks up on the lines.com. Plenty of great written content on there for you guys throughout this MLB season. And as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com. Find those listings in your area, such as what we've got for Friday night. Nate, let's get into it. Yeah, Cubbies and Cardinals in the afternoon, like you said, and then it's all night games. It's Giants minus 150 at Miami. The Nats are plus 118 at Cincy. Diamondbacks in a toss-up at Pittsburgh, uh, Detroit in the fake E-Rod, plus 290 at the Yankees. We're throwing Garrett Cole, Shane Bieber, and the Guardians, minus 150 at Baltimore. Twins are plus 180 at Toronto. Uh, Chicago White Sox, plus 165 at Tampa with Shane McClanahan going for the Rays. Uh, Logan Gilbert, minus 115 as the Mariners are in Texas. Padres plus 138 at Brewers premier pitching matchup there that we'll talk about Astros minus 130 at Royals Braves minus 175 at Coors the Red Sox are up to minus 165 at Oakland and then the Mets plus 130 at the Dodgers after a two nothing Dodgers win there to open that series we're going to begin out on the west coast there in Oakland Uh, targeting those A's that are not really playing for this year. They're playing for the future or, you know, maybe the future in terms of uh, getting a new stadium and, and, and built blowing it all up and starting all over. In any case, there's, they've lost six of their last seven and they're seven in 20 at that largely empty stadium out there. uh, The Coliseum, they are dead last in average and OPS and 29th in runs per game this year. And Nathan Uvalde on the mound for the Red Sox, who's a guy you can pretty much depend on when he faces lackluster lineups because he's so goddamn aggressive. He is, you know, after a rough outing, his last two, he has a 76% first strike rate, getting 15% swinging strikes, blowing it by guys with 17 Ks, two walks. And yeah, like I said, A's offense, no good. They're throwing James Caprielian who is also no good. Uh, He has 35% ground ball rate in the majors. It was 18% guys in three starts in the minors. I don't know how you cannot get minor leaguers to ground it out, but that's not a good sign. Uh, And, you know, he's getting a 27% outside the zone swing rate, no chasing really, which is actually an improvement for him um, over the last couple of years. And then that, that Red Sox lineup that has been boom bust. uh, Our apologies. If you, Tried to take the boom against Luis Castillo and the Reds two games ago. They did not produce anything. But then the next game, they come out, get seven runs. You're looking at now averaging eight runs per game in their last eight road games, including 16 twice hung on that White Sox pitching staff that is far, far better than the A's. So I like the Red Sox run total more than I like this minus 160 money line. Uh, total is only seven for the game, but the Red Sox only four runs is their projection, and it's plus money at FanDuel. I would take that all day. Yeah, that looks sounds just fine to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, James Caprillion, he's been kind of a disaster so far. Uh, he only has a 253 Babbitt, and his home run per fly ball is a little high, but not like crazy high. But yet he has a 5.93 ERA. Um, and the best of his ERA estimators is his FIP at 4.78. He is an extreme fly baller, like you said. Um, so the dead ball, the dead baseball should be helping him quite a bit, but it just doesn't seem to be. Um, and yeah, when you looked at his minor league starts, that's even when you see something's just underlying. There's some sort of issue because... He had a 5.85 FIP in his AAA starts. He was walking five per nine. I mean, I don't know. We've seen some guys come in real cold this year and and really have trouble uh, just like getting a feel for the baseball, I guess. It's kind of weird, though, because I can't find too much crazy stuff off in his peripherals. The one thing I did find, he's throwing his slider harder and it's not breaking as much. 
So I think he's leaving a lot of these in the zone and I checked his heat map and that's definitely the case. Uh, he's not getting him, he's not getting him to the corner of the zone. Um, they're all landing in the zone. And when I looked at his past heat maps, he was always very good about getting his slider, uh, to the, uh, glove side corner. So, yeah, I think if you can't miss a bat with a breaking pitch in major league baseball, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Um, and then on the other side, you got Nathan Ivaldi. He's allowing just infinite homers, basically 2.51 home runs per nine. Uh, he's getting barreled up too much, but he has a 3.14 Sierra and he's throwing all of his normal pitch mix at a normal velocity. So, I mean, I expect him to honestly be better going forward, but even if he's not, I mean, 3.77 ERA so far, I mean, that's obviously like fine, especially when you have the best offense in baseball backing you, which Boston's been, if you throw the cutoff date, like pretty much any day in May, I mean, Boston's been the best offense for the, basically the last like month plus they got some steam. I got them at minus 150. I still think they're playable at minus 160. I, I just think they honestly should run away with this. I don't mind the run line either here. Cause like you said, it's, it's a spot where I expect, um, you know, quite a few runs from them. So I still think however you want to approach this one, it, it, to me, Boston is just underpriced. Yeah, this is this is an absolutely perfect storm of of us saying take Boston in, in every which way that you can uh, to win with the, the, the run total there uh, with their run specifically, mm -hmm. um, the run line, all of that. Yeah, I think Eovaldi, you mentioned the ERA. It's also super bloated by two really bad starts at the beginning. Um, he did get lit up by Houston originally, too. That that didn't help that ERA. But now he's coming off that uh, complete game against the, the O's, right? And now he's coming up against this offense as well. And the A's, nothing uh, is like a get right. Can be two get right games in a row. You can't get much better than that uh, against two of the wor absolute, actually worst offenses in the entire uh, league there. Um, and yeah, on, on the other side of the ball, in, you, you said it, Mo, it's basically the last 20, 25 games or so, uh, wherever you want to cut it off, that they're at the top of the league in pretty much most important categories on offense as well a little bit of a slide honestly in that three in, over the last seven where they, they dropped the last two series that they probably should have won uh including to the o's but um definitely back on track here uh, in, on offense with their 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 uh you know their, their number one starter back on the mound so let's go to uh, a game that's going to have both pitchers uh that we think are, are completely dominant so far joe musgrave having a great season and obviously corbin burns uh making his case for cy young as well so uh start us off here nate with san diego taking on uh the brewers in milwaukee yeah, I mean, I'm interested in the Cy Young market, just looking at this game with Musgrove at plus 950. I don't know if his peripherals indicate that he can keep this up completely. Um, I mean, but he is painting uh, very effectively if he can continue to hit those spots. I think he'll, you know, just in the context of this game, be able to hold the Brewers lineup in check. We've talked about it a lot here. How their offense is very underwhelming. Um, and, and right now Musgrove throwing that slider a lot more, 37% of the time it it's up to rating plus three, uh, after rating minus three last year, it's getting 32% swinging and called strikes, uh, which is pretty consistent with the last few years. And he's just avoiding hard contact, not walking anybody, 11 walks and nine appearances, quality start in all of those. So I think between him and Burns, who's just lights out uh, pretty much eight of nine starts since uh, slightly struggling in the opener. And Burns' only issue is really the homers or the occasional hard hit ball. Um, you know, in his last four starts, he's given up three homers for to account for all four earned runs. But San Diego's 28th in slugging and 26th in home run rate. So I see another low scoring game here, even at six and a half runs. Minus 104 to the under is good juice. And like I targeted two starts ago with Burns, the 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 Brewers' money line and the under is plus 210 because he's unlikely to give up much. Their bullpen is so good. I think I even talked about the win margin of being one to three runs that two starts ago when they were facing the Padres and Blake Snell, and it was a 4-1 game. Uh, so I think something similar – could happen here. I like just the under and the money line here for the home team, though, at plus 210. I think I'd lean under as well. I mean, it's two aces, but I think a lot of people are going to be tempted to click on uh, the Padres with Musgrove at around plus 140. But to me, it's fair. Um, two aces, but Corbin Burns projects better for me. And yeah, I, I don't see anything in Musgrove's 
peripherals that's telling me he's like a sub three ERA guy now. And right now he's running sub two. Uh, one thing I do like for Milwaukee in this matchup is that Burns does have some lefty righty splits. When you look at his pitch values, his changeup shows up as his worst pitch. So that makes sense. And, and the Brewers have the ability to throw five lefties out there at him. So I, I think the projections are still too low on Burns, honestly. Um, they still think he's like a three ERA guy and we're on his third season of running almost all estimators starting with a two. So I, I think that's, he's better than the computers think. And yeah, I just think they're rightful favorites here, but yeah, I, I think I would lean under with these two just unexciting offenses first these aces and very good bullpens. Uh, Taylor Rogers, what he did to me yesterday, notwithstanding. Yeah, what he did to you personally, yeah, as he had that personal vendetta for sure. But no, I, I would agree with the under a hundred percent. Actually, it's it's where I feel strongest. A lot of the recent um, batting stats too for both of these teams. A lot of the guys that they're they're always leaning on um, have been, <clears throat> excuse me, have been completely uh, floundering. You know, Yelich definitely, uh, Andrew McCutcheon been struggling as well, Rias as well uh, in there for uh, for the Brew Crew. So I think definitely look under. I think you could consider uh, that no run for. First inning bet if you like it as well um, just between both these pitchers both of them uh, dominating in that first inning I believe uh, the stat here is Burns is 40 and 8 uh, to the, the no run first inning since 2020 uh, and then I believe this season as well you've got some pretty good numbers from Musgrove uh, 31 and 9 as well since the beginning of last season when it comes to that no run first inning so the, the combination of these two pitchers um, and their, their their quality you know uh, starts in the first inning uh, combined with the, the sort of rough offensive output from both these teams as of late um, I I would I would look at that as well, but feel even better, you know, just about taking that that under uh, for the total on the game there. So let's finish things off here with a slightly less uh, stellar pitching matchup. But Merrill Kelly still looks good for those Diamondbacks uh, taking on J.D. Brubaker in Pittsburgh. Uh, What are we thinking here, Mo? Do you like uh, Kelly in this one as as the uh, the reason to take the Diamondbacks? Yeah, our boy Merrill Kelly. uh, He's always coming through for us. I I think. This is to me just a matchup of two pitchers who are on opposite ends of basically where the market's valuing them compared to where they should be. Uh, I we seem to consistently find value on Merrill Kelly. We seem to consistently find value on Merrill Kelly last year and multiple seasons now. JT Brubaker is just not pitching to what the computers think he will. Um, this one, I, it did get steamed, but I, I still think you can get a little bit of value on the Diamondbacks. Anything better than minus 115. Merrill Kelly is improving a little bit. Uh, I was looking at his pitch mix. He has uh, dropped some of his fastball usage in favor of changeup and cutter. And changeup and cutter have been his best two pitches for the last two seasons. So imagine that. Throwing your best two pitches more is going to help you. And as far as JT goes, we just... It's not like he's thrown enough innings that we can be for sure that that he's going to underpitch his peripherals, but we're at 43 starts and more than 200 innings, and he's like way underpitching his peripherals. So I just think he's probably not going to perform to them, even though they're pretty solid like usual, around four uh, on a Sierra, but he's not going to throw a four ERA. And, and Diamondbacks, uh, better offense by about... 10 WRC. I think they should be like minus 120, minus 125 here. Yeah, like you said, they are getting a little steam up from minus 104 to, to minus 112. The total rising a little bit too. Um, but I, I mean, I, I think you could take the under here considering that Brubaker, if he just stops walking so many guys, should be pretty solid uh but that's that's an issue here against the diamondbacks he has that 11 percent walk rate and they're fourth in walks per game uh he's not getting many outside zone swings because his secondary pitches are not very good and uh, but on the other end yeah <clears throat> kelly another guy who will challenge you in the zone and and the pirates are 28th and runs 27th and average so like him to navigate this this lineup and I think the Pirates are probably due for some losses after winning five of six against the Dodgers and Padres just now, uh, four or five, I think it was. But in any case, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they they come back to earth here. 
That, that That's fair. But I, I was going to say, I mean, the reason that there has been that uptick in the play for the Pirates is they had a bunch of their, you know, sort of veteran, not very great players go down. They brought up three pretty good prospects as well um, and, and sort of showed out against, like you said, against the Dodgers in a way that definitely caught them by surprise. Uh, I, I doubt that the next time that that Pirates lineup goes back around to the Dodgers, that they have a little bit of uh, experience now with these young guys who, who aren't very good at the top of their lineup, but um, definitely not uh, on the same level here. I think Kelly should get things a bit back on track because he's failed to go past five innings uh, in his last three or four starts. So I think this is uh, an opportunity for him to kind of eat up a bit more and get back, uh, get right like he was uh, in his first roughly like three or four starts this season where he was super, super impressive. So that is all the time we have for you guys in this one. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page. Continue to follow along with us. We'll be back with you each and every weekday of this regular season. So until we see you next, happy betting.